Okay, I just removed this bulb. It's an NE51 from this socket, heater continuity. Now it had been broken when I received it. It wasn't broken in shipment because the little piece that's broken off there is the one that I broke off when I removed the bulb. But the bulb was already broken and in the pictures that were shown on eBay it was shown broken as well. So it was broken before it was even shipped to me. But nonetheless we'll have to replace that with a new NE51. Then we'll get, uh, get to checking the continuity and the uh, and the transformer, see whether it's in good condition. And I've left the Type 83 tube out because that's the rectifier for the bridge circuit. And we'll be testing mainly to see if we get heater voltages because once you've verified whether the meter is good or not, and this meter is not good, but I don't think that's going to be a problem because I think I can either fix it or I have a spare 650 that I can take a meter out of. So I think the meter's not going to be an issue. But the real question now is whether all of the windings on the transformer are good. So that's the next thing we'll do is start ohming out the transformer. So we'll be checking out that circuit and the windings of the transformer all the way down here and then all of the filament windings which are shown over here down there. They come out to the two pins labeled heater there. And of course that should be voltages from about 1 volt all the way around to about 50 volts. Now you may wonder why it doesn't have the higher voltage ratings like some tube testers do. This tube tester was intended primarily for television servicemen in the 50s. And at that time most of the tubes they were going to test were going to be either 6 volts or 12 volts. There were going to be a few 35s and 50s, so there's a 35 setting and a 50 setting, but mostly this was used on the 12 volt and 6 volt position. So let's get started on the next step, which is to check out the transformer. The tests we're going to make are primarily on this panel right here can see from underneath it has 10 pins on this side and 10 on the other and in the maintenance instructions it describes that it says all voltages required for the auxiliary socket panel appear on the 20 contact connector then it describes how to uh, identify the pin numbers basically they start right here with pin number one and that's two, three, four and so on up to ten. And then eleven starts on this side and goes up the left side to twenty. And those correspond with the pin numbers on the schematic that are shown here. For example, it's hard to read but the heaters are three and four. So 3 and 4 are going to be these two large wires here and there. This is 1, 2, 3, and then 4. So we're going to check those and uh, that should enable us to test all of the heater connections from the transformer. I've attached two wires to pins 3 and 4 with the red on 3 and the yellow on 4 and then I'm going to run those outside the chassis and that's what I'll use so that I can rotate the uh, filament switch or the heater switch as I check each of the windings. Okay, I've attached the meter to those two leads coming out from underneath pins 3 and 4 and uh, set it in the R times 1 position. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this heater switch. I'm going to start out in the heater continuity position. In that position it should be open. In other words, there should be infinite ohms because 
that's a position that puts a light bulb in series. And I've removed the light bulb. It's an any uh, 51. So there should be no current path. And as you see, it goes to zero. Then when I switch it to position one, I'll come around here so you can see both at the same time. You see it goes to continuity. Then as I increase the voltage, each position is showing continuity. What that tells me is that the heater winding of the transformer is working. As I get up to some of the higher settings, in this case I'm up to 15, the resistance will start going up because we're including more and more turns of the winding. Till finally when we get to the highest range, it's reading about 10 ohms, which is about right for this transformer. So I'm hoping that we've got good heater windings on the transformer. And that's the first part of the test. Now we're going to see if we get the actual correct voltage on these windings when we plug it into the to the wall. Now we before we do this, of course, I've already tested this to make sure that it's safe to plug into the wall. First I ran it on a uh, Variac and then I tested using a, uh, an, a watt meter to make sure that it wasn't drawing excessive current when it was plugged into the wall. So ordinarily you wouldn't just plug something like this in. You'd first test to make sure that the transformer isn't drawing too much current. But I've already done that, so we're ready to plug it in. I'm ready to start testing the heater switch. And I've plugged in the line cord over here to the uh, terminal or AC line strip there. And I still have the 83 tube removed. So now I'm going to turn it on and I have reset the meter to 50 volts AC. And we should get between 1 and 50 volts as we rotate this knob. Notice that the power light came on and we have a small deflection on the meter. Get rid of that. Now as we turn the switch up, try to get it so you can see both, see the voltage begins to rise. And when it gets to the 50 volt position, we read a little over 50 volts on the meter. And that's because our line voltage here is a little bit high about 123 volts. This was originally designed to operate on 117 or thereabouts. So we're getting a little bit high. There's 35 and you notice that it's reading slightly over 40 volts. Now that's within within specs for the tubes. They can take some tolerance on heater voltage. 30 volts reads about 32, but the important thing is to go down here to about 12 volts and see where that reads, because that's one of the important ones. It's reading about 14 volts, and then 6 volts is reading about just under 7, about 6.8 volts, which it should be 6.3, so it's about a half a volt high, but that's not out of tolerance for most of the tubes that we'll be testing. It becomes pretty critical when you start testing one volt tubes and things like that because they're a little more fragile. <clears throat> okay, so we know that our transformer heater, the primary is working and the secondary heater windings are working. Now we'll check some of the other voltages on that test panel. 